That is stalked by my doctor. Katie, what did you think of this fine, fine made-for-television film? I loved it, clearly. (laughs) I mean, if evidenced by the fact that I've watched all of the sequels (laughs) since watching this. So funny, you talked about the Mexico thing, because that is where number two takes place. Oh, okay, so they do like a Saw X? Saw X takes place in Mexico. Uh. Yeah, so he does get over, he does get over Sophie and has a new, um... But Sophie, I, Sophie's know, back like, in at least one of the sequels. Is she? Is she? She, is. she, she probably Patience Revenge. I assume that's Sophie's story, right? Yes, okay. that's Sophie. That is Sophie. <laughs> yes, you are correct. She she makes her return. It's not over for her. But I, like I said, like I think I think because it was so overacted is why I liked it. But you were right. It's the commitment to the character. Like he's committed to being this absolute nutcase in a lifetime movie, and I love it. I know we mentioned his little freakouts. I kind of skipped over his best one. It's after she rejects his gift. Then he goes home and he just starts beating up on the doll that he bought her. And it was the funniest thing in the world. I loved it. I don't know. Maybe this was just me. But as much as I laugh at it, I feel like there are genuinely men out there that react like that. And I think maybe that's why I found it so funny. Because I can picture like even some of the guys I've gone on really horrible dates with, like, I <laughs> yeah. I can picture them in my head. I can see their faces, like, doing that silly shit sure. after being rejected. So maybe that's part of why I enjoyed it so much. I get what you mean. Like, there is, <laughs> this is a stretching of reality, but there is enough reality in there. Oh, yeah. It's a silly, goofy little movie, but, like, this is not outside of you know, the realm of possibilities, like maybe not to this like degree and, you know, this ridiculousness, but I don't doubt for a second that this shit happens regularly. And and I mentioned earlier that I have seen a film that had basically this exact plot. It was handled with more class. And I actually, we were supposed to record this last night, but there were some technical issues. So I actually watched that movie last night. It is the 1935 film, The Raven, starring Bela Lugosi and Boris Karloff. I love that movie. I think that's one of the best. It's not technically a universal monster movie because there's no monsters in it, but I think it's one of the best films of that kind of 1930s universal horror era. It's great. Bela Lugosi is a surgeon who saves a woman's life after a car accident and then thinks he's entitled to her body and is pissed off at her and pissed off at her father. She's like a 30-year-old woman in the movie, but if you think about it, 30 years old in 1930s, she's got about as much autonomy as a 18-year-old girl, 17-year-old girl, so it's like pretty similar dynamic. There's some subtlety in the in the character that's not really here. But I mean, it's a completely different movie in, in just how they tackle the subject matter, but remarkable amount of similarities at the same time. So I just wanted to point point out that if you want to see a black and white, less goofy version of the same story, check out Bela Lugosi <laughs> in The Raven. But uh, yeah, nothing about this movie is subtle. No, there's <laughs> there's no reference to gynecological so studies in The Raven. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you mentioned the overacting, and we have talked about Eric Roberts is actually good in this movie. And this is something that I bring up often, and I bring it up a lot with Nicolas Cage, because there are some people, and I'm not saying you're one of these people, but I'm just like, there are people who are like, oh, overacting is bad. Overacting can be bad. Overacting can be really good in the right context. And I think in this context, made for TV, kind of generic stalker movie, it's the right context. If if this was single white female, this would be too much. But I think just the lowering of expectations as to even just the presentation of the film, the performance is awesome. I think Eric Roberts is great in this movie. Yes, he's over the top. Yes, he's, he's the overacting. Character. Yeah. Like, there's a reason they have four sequels to it. I guess. I guess. I'm I'm sure a big reason is that Eric Roberts works cheap, but yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but why not Stalked by My Pilot? We have Stalked by My Doctor again. Yeah, there's like Stalked by My Mom. There's so many Stalked by... Yeah, you, you do remember those old books... The ones that took place in, like, schools, and it was always, like, they always had, like, kind of clever titles, but they were always, like, oh, my teacher's a vampire kind of thing. Oh, yes! You know those books? What were those called? I know those books. Oh, my God. Yeah, I I know I had a bunch of them. There were so many of them. I probably had about six or seven. I probably only read a couple, but because I was more of a Magic Treehouse guy. Yeah, those books. I'm, I'm just thinking of, like, there's so many variations of my gym teacher is a monster. My math teacher is a monster. My basketball coach is a yeah. monster. That's, like, what all those books were. We need a a stalked by my 
you know, just like that, <laughs> you know, and stuff because we need every occupation possible. <laughs> Stalked by my therapist could be a good one. Oh, it's the Bailey School Kids. I Bailey had to School look this Kids. Up. Yeah, I, Bailey I literally, I have not thought about that in twenty three years. But, but, it, but Doug Campbell brought it all back to me for a moment. Yeah, vampires don't wear polka dots. <laughs> That's such a throwback. Listen, this is this is what this podcast is all about. It's all about <laughs> watching weird ass movies and and being reminded of Unlocking times of less memories. miserable times in our lives. <laughs> I don't know. Remember Back- when I could feel joy? 